Hi guys. So I am back to show you how I cover my hardback uh, journal. I have a video of how I um, create my covers, my hardback uh, junk journal covers, but I don't have a video showing you how I fabric cover them. So I was about to cover this and I decided, let me just show you how I do that. So uh, I already have my fabric, my, my hardcover created. And if you go back and look at that video, this is where I would have left off. Okay, so I have my fabric here and it measures exactly, you know, you want your fabric, I'll do this side, to have about, you know, an inch on either side, you know, bigger than your cover. Let me make sure I am in frame. Yeah. So once you have that, you want to, you know, make sure it's in the center, like I have it here, hold it and flip it. Okay, this is how I do it. Everybody has their own way of doing it. I hold it. I I love Fabri-Tac. This is my glue of choice, okay? I hold it and I pull it back. Now, personally, I don't like when my glue comes through my fabric. And in I prevent that from happening by doing this and it gets a little bit messy on my finger but I don't care because I have a little piece of you could use a little piece of fabric you could use napkin you know paper towels or whatever I take my fabric tack and I'm still holding it because I don't want my fabric to move and I just start and I add my glue. I hope you can see this. Okay, a generous amount. Because remember, you can't sew through chipboard. And this is basically chipboard, you know. Make sure I'm in frame. If I was to lay this right on the glue, it's going to stick through my fabric, and I don't like that. I take my finger and I spread it thin. Make sure you get the corners, the edge. Okay. And this prevents your glue from going through your fabric. And yet you still get really good coverage. Okay. Once you know that you don't have no globs. Then you go ahead and you peel your fabric back. And my sister's using my little, <laughs> my little roller. But that's okay. Just use your hand and press it down and see I have no seepage and then peel it back and now we start you want to peel it back until you see the glue because you know that's where you left off did I move out of frame no, and I'm going to glue up until this edge. You know, you see where my um, my little channel here is? I want to glue right up until that channel. And if you go back and look at how I create my cover, you will see how I created that channel. Because I show that. I 
I am not stingy with my glue on these covers. And I do the same thing up until the very edge of that channel. Make sure you don't have no globs. Everything is nice and, you know, you want an even uh, layer of glue. Now, when you get to this, see, I'm right at the channel. You want to add glue in the channel. But I still do not want my glue seeping through in that channel. So I'm still going to do the same thing, but I'll use my pinky to spread that out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go across it and I will take, you could take a ruler, you could take anything. I'm going to use this piece of chipboard and I'm going to go into, I'm going to find the channel and I'm pressing down. Because I want that channel really nice and defined because it looks nice on the book when the book is, you know, finished. And now I'm going to take my clean finger, or this one that's clean, and then you go with your finger. If you have, say, your bone folder, you can use your bone folder and find it and define it even more. Go back. Find it, take a ruler. I'm just giving you different options here. Take a ruler to find the channel. Now that that's defined, I'm gonna go and go on to the spine and do the same thing up until the edge of the next channel. All by steps. I don't wanna go into the channel yet, the second channel yet. I'm going to take my gluey finger <laughs> and now make sure I don't have no globs I will bring it over so you're working this way, okay? Or if you're right-handed, I mean left-handed, you can work this way, it doesn't matter. Just work in one direction. Now we're at this channel and I'm gonna do the same thing Take my finger. Well, my glue is like starting to, you know how that glue does. And I'm going to spread it out because I don't want no seepage. And now I'm going to lay it across, find my channel, press in. Because if you add glue on this side before you press in, the glue is going to hold your, your fabric and you won't be able to 
make the fabric go in. You know what I mean? It'll hold it. If you don't add glue on this side, your fabric will be able to move in to the channel. I hope I explained that right. I don't know if I did. Take my clean finger and I'm gonna press it. And you can't really see the the channel because this fabric, um, you know, because of the little squares and stuff. I'm creating the 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 covers for the three journals I'm working on, and this is gonna be the cover for the Wizard of Oz with the you know like the gingham. Okay, so now I have my channel well defined. Now that I have that, now I'll go here, do the same thing. Hope I'm still in frame. Yeah, I am. And I'm gonna bring it halfway. Spread that baby good. Nice coverage, but thin. And bring it over, starting over here again. where you your glue starts right there And now you have your outside cover covered with fabric. Now what to do with the remainder. Most of you guys already know how to do this, but I know I have uh, newbies that are starting off. So I hope this is helpful for them. Let me just clean up my mat because I don't want to get glue on my outer fabric. And this is what I love about this um, glue. You can just roll it right off. And see my finger? I just roll it right off. This is what I love about that glue. So, now we have this, right? So what I like to do, I don't, you can fold it like this and then go like that, but that creates too much bulk. I don't like to do that. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm cutting at an angle right there. And then I'm doing the same at a little angle right there. So you want something like that. I hope you guys can see that. Let me bring it closer. Like that and you want to do that to all four corners at a little angle and then at a little angle back that way like that okay so your little piece should look like something like that same thing like that And last one. Okay. 
Okay. So now you have something that looks like this. Okay. So I start gluing the long sides first. Okay. Am I in frame? I hope so. Yeah. I put a string of glue. Okay. And I still don't want seepage. So I still spread it. Spread it good towards the edge. Okay, and the first thing I bring in is the spine. As you can see, I got a little bit there because I didn't spread it too good. But that's okay because this gets covered either with fabric or with paper. So I'm not too worried about this side. Pull it nice and tight. Now we go this side. Same thing. Spread it. Long sides first. Makes it easier. Bring it in. Nice and tight. Now we go to the smaller, you know, to the short sides, same thing. Make sure you cover a little bit of the fabric with some glue so it could catch. Okay. And bring it in nice and tight. Same thing on this side. Bring it in tight. There we go. Now at this point, you can cut another layer for your inside. Um, you can cut the axis here, which is what I'm going to do. Um, for the spine here, I'm going to cut another piece of fabric. Let's see here. Let me take some of this off. Let me just grab another piece of this fabric here. Let me just... Let me just... I'll show you really quick what I mean. Okay, so I have a piece of fabric here. 
okay? Because the spine is going to show when you put your signature. I want to cut a piece. Now, let me, let me just cut it a little bit even. It doesn't have to be perfect because part of your paper, because I'm covering this with some paper, you know, and the front and back cover, I'm not going to worry too much about the end pieces of this spine. Okay. Because when I put my paper here and my paper here, my paper is going to overlap this and this, and it's going to come here. So it's going to cover. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, let me just grab any kind of paper. Um, I'm going to give you an example. This is not the paper I'll be using, but when I put my paper down, it's going to be like that. You see what I mean? So you'll see an edge, an edge, and an edge. And same thing here. You'll see an edge, an edge, and an edge. Okay? And then your spine, your signatures, you're going to see some of the, some of that. So here I want to cut. Let's see if we can get this a little straight. And I'm going to start at the top. And you want to kind of lay it in the middle of your spine, like almost, you know, where your papers are. And I'm going to, let me clean my tip here. I don't want to take it all the way to the top of the book. You can if you want to, but I don't. And lay your glue. And the same thing. Bring it down. Spread it thin. Because I still don't want that seepage. to come through and I'm going to lay it straight and glue it down. And I'm going to work myself down, find where the glue stopped and it stopped right there and work my way down. Now let's cut before I glue. Let's see if I could cut this a little straight. I'm using pinking shears, but you really don't have to. You can use whatever shears you have. Find where I stopped. My glue is starting to go, but I have another bottle. Okay. And 
spread it. The thing with uh, with not no seepage is spread. Make sure you got good coverage, but thin coverage, and it won't seep through your fabric. And now, if that doesn't bother you, then you don't have to spread. This is just an extra step that I take. Okay. And I have my cover completed. Now you can go around and see where you need a little bit of extra glue and tap it down. I need a little bit more at this little corner and just spread that out. Glue that down. You can see here, need a little bit more here. Come on. Okay. And spread that down. There we go. Now, when you add your your end paper, it doesn't really matter because your end paper is going to keep it down the edges. You know what I mean? So, but I'm just finicky like that. So now when I add my end paper, it's going to be nice and neat like that. See? And same thing here. So that is how I do my cover. And then you can do your closure and then it's nice and finished. And then you can add corners if you want to. You don't even need to because your corners are nice and neat. You have your, you can't see it because of the, you know, the fabric is not gonna allow you to see it, but maybe you can see the definition on the creases. see and that is how you cover your fabric your your fabric you know your hardcover journal and everything is nice and neat see so I hope that helps um, if you have any questions uh, leave them in the comments down below I'm coming back uh, today, but I wanted to do it uh, live in case you guys have any questions. Uh, hopefully, the video is not going to be all distorted like the last one because uh, I want to do some cabbage paper and I thought it would be fun to do it live. Uh, and um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, hit like. That helps me out a lot. And don't forget to comment if you have any questions and share if you want to <laughs> and yeah thank you so much for watching guys and i will talk to you later when i come back with uh dyeing some cabbage paper right out of my kitchen all right guys